Hello everyone! In this video I will increase the size of every planet in the solar system by 100 times. You'll see how this changes the planets and what will ultimately happen to the solar system. All of this will be demonstrated using the Universe Sandbox Simulator. Let's go! And we'll start with the first planet from the Sun. That's Mercury. And I will increase its radius exactly 100 times. First I increase it by 10 times and now by another 10 times. And that means I've increased Mercury's radius exactly 100 times. And it turns into, as I understand it, a star. Some kind of strange, unclear silhouette like this. Here it clearly states that the radius is already 3.49 times that of the massive planet Jupiter. And its mass is already 16% of the Sun's total mass. But we'll come back here later and see what happens after some time. Next is Venus. I also make Venus's radius even 10 times larger. And then another 10 times larger. That truly means an overall 100 times larger. And as we can see, Venus also turns into a star. Wow, its truly enormous radius is 8.66 times that of Jupiter. And its celestial mass is already more than half the mass of our Sun. Incredible! We'll also see later what kind of star it will become in the end. It's about to ignite now. Truly. And next up is our magnificent planet Earth. I make its radius 10 times larger at first, and now another 10 times larger. Oh wow, look at that. Look at what happened to Earth, it's turned into some kind of accretion disk. What is that? That's crazy! Well, it already says here that this star is in orbit around the Sun, so Earth has turned into a star just like Venus and Mercury did. Its radius is approximately 9.11 times the one of Jupiter. In terms of the Sun's radius, that's basically like one Sun. Incredible! Its mass is 0.56 times the mass of the Sun. Oh, and something is already happening to Mars. That's already the influence of those stars starting to affect Mars. Alright, nothing supernatural has happened to it yet, there's just a kind of haze around Mars for now. First, I increase it by 10 times and then by 100 times. Oh, and of course Mars has also turned into a star now. Well, it shows that the radius is 48% of the Sun's radius and the mass is 0.32 times the mass of the Sun. If you shine a flashlight on it, you just get this silhouette. Well, that's how it will work here. When I fast forward time, these stars will start shining properly. Now Jupiter. Here's its great red spot. First, I make its radius 10 times larger, and it's already become a star. But I need to make it 100 times bigger, so I'll increase it by another 10 times. Oh wow, this is truly epic. Look at what just happened here. A star seemed to collapse very instantly. Incredible, in the center it's unclear, something is visible or maybe nothing at all. Here I'm trying to select something but it's just fragments. As I understand it, Jupiter has disappeared. Well anyway, we'll check it out later. Now Saturn. First I increase its size by 10 times and it turns into a star again. But I make it 10 times bigger once again. And the very same thing happens as with the gas giant Jupiter. This particular planet just seems to have actually exploded. Maybe Uranus won't explode? Let's try playing around with it. I make its radius 10 times bigger. It didn't turn into a star. And then 10 times bigger again and it became a star. But it doesn't seem to have exploded. It turned into something like this, like Earth did. Remember, some kind of accretion disk. And there are jets too. But the radius of this object became larger than the Sun's, by as much as 3.65 times. Incredible. And its mass is about 12% less than the Sun's mass. Now Neptune? Let's see what happens to it. I'm increasing its radius first by 10 times, and now by 100 times. And here we have a similar situation as with Uranus. Something like that happened. The radius of this object exceeds the Sun's by 3.54 times, and its mass is 6% less than the Sun's. And of course, let's not overlook the dwarf planet Pluto. Let's see what it will look like. I'll do it like this so it's easier to see. First, I'll increase its size by 10 times. Basically, nothing supernatural happened to it. But if you increase its radius by 100 times, it still ends up being Pluto as Pluto. Nothing really changes. As a result, its radius turned out to be 1.57 times the radius of Jupiter, and its mass is 6.87 times that of Jupiter. Incredible. Now let's see what happens to the structure of the solar system when all these objects become so gigantic. So let's watch from this point, speeding up time. Oh wow, what bright trails we have here! Here we can see where Jupiter and Saturn are. There's just some kind of shockwave going on. Neptune is shining over there like that. And near the sun, okay, the sun has started to move. Well, that makes sense. There are lots of stars here. Everything has started to intersect with each other. Mercury has just been thrown out of here. Basically, the solar system is simply starting to fall apart. Here, I'm speeding it up even more. Everything is just breaking down and the structure is lost. 
Well, as you can clearly see for yourselves, it's chaos, total mayhem, everything is spinning quite chaotically, and perhaps something will even collide somewhere. But if any of these stars collide, we'll see a supernova, that's quite obvious. Let me speed up time even more, and now everything is even more scattered. And basically the situation with the solar system is clear, everything was destroyed, the entire structure. Here we have Mercury, a truly full-fledged star with a scorching surface temperature of 3075 degrees Celsius. Oh, and this is what Venus looks like, kind of like a white star I guess. Its surface temperature is 8962 degrees Celsius. So in our simulation, Venus wasn't just the hottest planet, but most likely also turned into the hottest star. Well, let's compare it to our Earth now. So, here is Earth itself, and its average surface temperature is 8885 degrees Celsius. That's quite a bit cooler than on the star Venus. So I was indeed right, Venus ended up being the hottest star in this specific comparison. And Earth turned into this kind of accretion disk. A strange star, it seems to be a white type star, but why there's an accretion disk here is unclear. And I can't seem to find Mars. Maybe it collided with some star and I didn't notice. Well, let's take a look at Uranus then. Here we have Uranus and Neptune rotating together, kind of forming a binary star system. And they even look quite similar visually. Well, these are some strange stars. The surface temperature is minus 222 degrees. It certainly looks unusual. It's the same thing with Neptune, as you can see. Here it's minus 227, as if the temperature hasn't changed at all. I'll even speed up time here, it's already 100 years per second, and there's absolutely no effect on the temperature. Well, there's nothing interesting with Pluto. Everything is dark here, it's moved away from all these stars. If you light it up, basically, it looks like this. I'll show it to you much better in another detailed simulation. So, I've restarted the simulation, and now I won't touch those specific objects. Instead, I'll go straight to Pluto and make it significantly brighter so you can clearly see it well. And now I'll increase its radius by 10 and then by 100 times. Now let's speed up time and see if anything interesting happens to it or not. But now almost 10 years are passing per second, and nothing is happening to Pluto. Its temperature isn't changing, and its appearance isn't changing either. It just got bigger, that's all. But now its mass is 6.87 times the mass of Jupiter. Most likely the Kuiper belt will suffer a little, of course. Well, here I'm showing you the orbits. Here's Pluto's orbit. Over time, this enlarged Pluto will definitely start affecting some objects in the Kuiper belt. Here's Quawar. See the object? It's already started orbiting closer to the Sun. So the effects have really started already. Guys, I don't want to overlook one thing about Jupiter. I'll show you that if I increase its radius by 10 times and then another 10 times, it will start to explode. Yes, we've seen that. But let's take a closer look at how it will look, since we didn't look at it that way before. Basically, if you speed up time, you can see that this enlarged Jupiter just breaks apart into pieces like this. Then, well, that's pretty understandable indeed, but that's still not all, guys. Now using Saturn as an example, I'll show you. If you stop time and increase its size by 10 times, and then by 100 times, and then start time again, you'll see something interesting. The result will be completely different. I start the time, and immediately we get a massive supernova. So if I had increased the radius by a full 100 times right away, instead of just starting with 10 times, we would have had a supernova instantly, and it would have been even more incredibly epic. Right guys? And I want to show you a clear example. I just increased the radii of all the planets, including the dwarf planet Pluto, by a hundred times without starting time. Now, I will start the time and you'll clearly see that the immense gas giants, specifically Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, immediately collapse into spectacular supernovas. This is of course an incredible sight, just epic. Look at how this truly looks, and the nebulae appear in different colors, which looks really quite impressive. Such is, and obviously from this supernova explosion, the entire solar system will be completely incinerated. So, this is truly the kind of epic finale we have here. And of course, I'll speed up time. After a while, these nebulae will gradually start to dissipate, eventually becoming progressively dimmer and dimmer. Here's a clear example. All of it has disappeared. And as we can see, the structure of the solar system was completely destroyed. But I see that many asteroids survived. They were burned by the supernova explosion. Here's Pluto, I made it brighter. This is what it looks like. It's covered by an atmosphere, minus 197 degrees. And by the way, according to the simulator, there's some kind of Saturn. And this indeed is a truly black hole. Wow, quite. Here, the black hole turned out really well. Look, it's a pure black hole with an accretion disk. Incredible. And it says that the mass of this black hole is 15 times that of the Sun. 
Jupiter also turned into a black hole with an accretion disk after the supernova explosion. And its mass is also 15 solar masses. This is how Uranus looks, also very similar, but here the mass is smaller, already 5.84 solar masses. And here is Neptune. Its mass is 6.78 solar masses. Earth, as you can see, hasn't changed, just like in the first part of this experiment. Venus basically is the same too, but here the temperature is already 7600 degrees Celsius, whereas before it was higher. And this time finally I can show you Mars, so this is what it has become. Its surface temperature is 1615 degrees. Although I'm not sure if it's a red dwarf or not, but its mass here is as much as 0.32 solar masses. Well, with a temperature of 1600 degrees, you could consider it a red dwarf. And its radius is 0.31 of the radius of our star. So overall, the situation in the solar system now looks like this. Everything is flying apart here, the sun is flying away and many objects are flying away as well. A binary system like this has formed, consisting of two black holes, Jupiter and Saturn. They are orbiting around a common center of mass. Well, overall, everything is clear. Here's another look at the newly formed black hole, Saturn. So today we had quite an epic experiment. The results are truly incredible, especially with the gases and planets. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and write a comment about what you thought of this video and the experiment. Thank you very much for watching and see you again next time in the universe.